Thanks for tuning in to A Deeper Look Within, hosted by Ioni Jeffries. Please help us welcome our first guest, photographer Kennedy Carter. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Are you chilling? <laughs> I don't know. I just woke up probably like 20 minutes ago. Really? Uh-huh. That's awesome. You sleeping in. Is that I what you've been know. doing? I don't have nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real shit. Okay, so starting, we want to know, like, what... How did you get started in photography? And, like, what are your other art forms, too? Like, what other ways do you like to express yourself? I first got started in photography when I was in high school, and I thought that I could get through the class easy, but my teacher was a bit of a hard ass, and um, I couldn't. (laughs) That's, like... That's you. (laughs) We fly through the class. So I ended up getting more into it, and I liked it more and more, and it kind of just stuck. Um, I mean, I don't really have any other art forms that I take part in. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are ones that I want to do, but I'm a bit of a perfectionist, and I don't want to show anybody anything until it's really good. Yeah. So, yeah. What what else would Kennedy Carter be doing if not photography? If I was good at it, I'd do pole dancing, but I can't even touch my toes, so <laughs> got to start somewhere. <laughs> I can see you being a pole dancer, especially those the photos, that series that you were working on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. And what, so in your photography and like, and that, that being your chosen art form right now, because the thing about it too, you're still, you're still in a, at an age where you're experiencing yourself and you're really coming into who you are as a person, so... You, I can only imagine what's gonna come up and like what you're gonna do in a couple of years, like with photography and even extending beyond that. But what, uh, what would you say like motivates you or like influences the work that you choose to do? Uh, I think, um, black people, um, yeah. memories. I think that's an interesting thing that us as humans can do is um recollect and remember Mm -hmm. um moments and i think when i look at my work i want other people to look as if they're peering into a memory Mm -hmm. um i'm trying to think of what else probably motivates me um i think people seeing themselves in a manner that they've never been seen before Mm -hmm. um I think in the history of photography and re- in relation to black people, we've always been represented in not the best light. So um, how could we use photography today or um, I-, I think during this time period to uh, show people how I think the beauty in our culture, but mm-hmm. also um, uh, the pain in it and what it comes from and how it stems from history. Mm. That's deep. Yeah, you definitely convey that in your work time and time again, like, which is why what I think separates you from so many other people who are in the same profession as you. Um, and why you have so much, so many accolades even come. And, I, and just knowing you personally, I know that you don't care about the accolade part of it. Like, that's not why you do the work. But it's so beautiful to see that others in the world are influenced and like and really recognize and resonate with the work that you create that is that's a a talent a skill set actually i have your piece right here right by the tv oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) i bought it like i think i bought it from you last year but that's my favorite piece of yours well one of them it was my favorite piece at the time now i don't even know um (laughs) So I wanted to, speaking of like other people like really resonating with your work, um, we wanted to talk more about like your experience with Vogue, like what, and not even just with Vogue, but with any of like these, these larger platforms that recognize you, what is that feeling like? Like just being an artist who creates and knowing that, you know, like even at that level, they're seeing this and going like, wow, this is something that's new. This is something that's innovative. Like we haven't seen this before. Um, I think it's really, it can be very dope, it can be very touching, but I feel like at times, um, living in a smaller town, it can feel almost like, I don't know, like, I have a weird imposter syndrome sometimes, Um, I, I think that living in a smaller town you can often shrink yourself and I feel like I kind of go through that a lot Mm -hmm. um shrinking and minimizing my accomplishments Mm -hmm. um 
I think that I don't know. I think it could be really cool, but I, when I'm when I get this, when I reach this accomplishment, but I have to go seat tables at a restaurant, it can be mm. very off putting. But mm. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that's that what, yeah, mm. yeah, that's something that I'm still trying to. I think it's a part of what my story is going to be, but it's it's it can be very difficult. Yeah. So. And speaking of that, too, like, first of all, what you have to do to support yourself and keep food on the table and make sure that you have your basic necessities met, like, you got to do what you have to do. And there is, it doesn't take away from your brilliance. It actually adds to it to see that you're willing. Girl, you don't even know. There are so many people who they won't do it because of the ego part portion of it. The fact that you can go beyond that and you can still, like live in it and I want you to talk more about how this moment with um with COVID-19 being out and like really placing all of us in a moment of rest what ways have you been resting or like just really coming to peace with yourself and what are some of the things that you are wanting to like work on during this time or work through uh um I think when it money wise, I never really buy anything that I can um, have fun with recreationally. But I've been kind of I mean, I kind of have no choice but to as well as I shoot a lot of films. So yeah. the place that um, well, I'm I'm trying to social distance so I can't <laughs> go get my film processed right. that but I don't know when the place is going to close. So I've been buying my own chemistry and doing that. I got a Nintendo Switch, so hey, that was the first thing in a long time that I've bought for myself. <laughs> I've been playing Animal Crossing. And I've been sleeping, but I've really been bored. I think that... <laughs> That's some real shit. <laughs> it, I've been so bored. Like, my friends have been so annoyed with me because I will call them at the most random times. I just haven't... I, I was kind of like, Yoni's too busy, but I have been calling every single person. I'm feeling so annoying. But doing that, even my Nana's like, why are you calling me? <laughs> you know it's something when your grandma's like, yo, chill out. <laughs> yeah. But I, that Nintendo Switch has been very fun. I've just been resting and trying to keep up with rest, I think. Um, yeah. Living in a capitalist society when money is not the center of your attention especially during the week because yeah. time is really money um you you feel as though you lose your purpose so i've kind of been grappling with that yeah. as well but yeah same girl kind of- same and like uh-huh. having for myself like i've i've had every all of us have everything that we had planned has been canceled like everything which, yeah and as an artist and as someone who like in doing like curatorial events and helping other people with it that is how I support myself like day in and day out so it, I really have to rely on my friends my family right now to like help me get through this moment and thankfully like some of these artist relief funds I applied to them I haven't received anything as of yet but I'm like to just to know that I'm not the only person going through this that it is like a pandemic even more than just the virus itself is more of like the effects that it has economically. Um, uh-huh. it, and I, that's rather off-putting for everyone. But again, I think having like that share and unified, like, okay, I'm not the only person going through this can make it more bearable uh-huh. in a way. Cause there, there are still moments where you're like, damn, like I know for me, I have very literal moments of like, how am I going to eat? Like, uh-huh. and right now I'm fine, but there could be moments in the future where I'm not. And being financially insecure is just, yeah, it makes you it makes you feel like your worth is tied up in it. So it makes you feel worthless. But you just have to, like, keep pushing and, like, keep, keep at the forefront. Like, hey, I didn't, there's nothing I can do to control this. This is completely out of my control, which means that something's going to happen for me in a way that it needs to. Uh-huh. And kind of, like, leave it there. But... Thank you for sh- for sharing all of that, um, especially touching on how much you you struggle or like you live with imposter syndrome, being as successful as you are and being as young as you are. Like you have done so much already. And I know I speak for myself and so in countless others. We can't wait to see what you're going to do with your career. We can't wait to see where you're going to go, what new discoveries will take place um, 
as you grow and as you have more life experiences. Because, like, you're here right now, and you you have to have a job. But, girl, like, where you're headed, you're going to be fine. Outside of COV, COVID-19, outside of... uh not man. Yeah. But the, I think the craziest part, too, is, like, we don't know how long this is going to last. Uh-huh. So it makes it even more, like... <laughs> Yeah, even leaving outside, it's like the boogeyman. Yeah, it is in the air. The boogeyman is in the air. Uh All right, boo, thank you. This concludes our episode of A Deeper Look Within featuring photographer Kennedy Carter. Please be sure to support this artist at her cash app, dollar sign KG Carter. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time.